doing good. I'm doing excellent. I'm glad to hear that. I'm just going to have you start off by introducing yourself. Uh, how you doing? I'm Larry Singleton. I'm the author of Prayers and Pool Boys, um, a cancer survivor, father of two. All right. All right. And I feel like I first found you because I saw your book being promoted on Facebook. I think you might have been running a Facebook ad or something. And that's how I had came across it. I absolutely loved your book. Can you just start by telling us for those who don't know, what inspired you to write the book and why the Po' Boys became so important? Right. First of all, thank you for having me. Uh, like I said, at some point throughout the process, I'm going through chemo and one of the nurses who had read one of my previous novels recommended it. She was like, you have a powerful story, a powerful testimony. You have to use your voice. You have to tell your story. So here we are. Absolutely. So I know that you have the first one. You have the prayers and po' boys. Do right. you have more books as well? I do. I'm actually in the process of redoing my first book. So I can't wait to get that back out. And yeah, a couple of other things. Uh, I'm involved in the cancer experience, which is covering their bestseller. So there's that too. All right. I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Can you tell us where we can find your books as well? I'm on Amazon. Definitely. Perfect. And so most of your books right now, they're nonfiction. Do you have any books of fiction at all? Or are you yeah, uh, working on one? I actually have two, but I'm in the process. I got deals for both of them and I'm in the process of redoing them. So I don't want to overstep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That makes sense. As far as events goes for this year, are there any events that we'll see you at this year or next year? Absolutely. I have a couple of books signed and scheduled. So if you happen to be in the New Orleans area, check me out. Okay. Are you originally from New Orleans? Yes. I feel like I Absolutely. remember that in your book. I visited about two, three years ago and I loved it. Um, I didn't try out the food enough though. No, you got to try the food. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely if you could collaborate and with any writer or author alive or deceased who would it be good one oh uh, i would probably say james bolton mm. okay why would you say him i think as far as authors go everything i've ever read from him was profound and it left an impact. It left a mark, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I know you said you have some books in the works. You can't talk about them just, <laughs> just yet. What advice would you have for someone who's working on their first book? They focus. They, this is the biggest misconception with being an author. People feel like until you become a best-selling author, it's basically a hobby. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody will ask me, what do you do for a living? I'm an author. Well, what do you do for money? <laughs> so you have to be strong. You have to persevere through all that. And being an author is chasing a dream that only you can see. Mm -hmm. And that would be my advice. The, the simple, short, and cut answer, just stay on the grind. Stick to it. Absolutely. I agree with you there. Um, when you worked on your first book, was that through a publisher or did you decide to self-publish? I self-published it. I was a novice. I had no clue what I was doing. I just knew I had a good idea. And you bet on yourself. Absolutely. It's a great way to do it. How do you currently find yourself promoting and marketing your books? A lot of social media stuff. I've gone through a few professional marketers, but again, that's all trial and error. Everyone will guarantee you, I can sell a million books for you, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's all trial and error. You find a formula that works, stick with it. Absolutely. Consistency is what will do it. You have to believe Absolutely. in yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's a process. I feel like the process, you can see one author do something and it works for them. You can try right. it out too. And for whatever reason, it just does not hit the same when you do it. You have to stay true to yourself and remember 
why you initially started writing. Absolutely. All right. And what and platforms can we find you on on social media? Primarily, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, too, but more than likely, you'll find me on Facebook. Okay. All right. I had another question for you, and it slipped my mind. How did your Take family your time, it'll come back? Yeah. How did your family respond when you first told them you were going to write a book? I think they kind of saw that part coming, but they were devastated with the diagnosis. That was, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because by the time I got the idea to really like, yeah, I'm going to really do this. By then, I wasn't in remission, but you could see I was handling chemo well. Like, yes. so that wasn't the surprise. They they kind of saw that coming. Okay. Um, and I know you, you put a lot of your stories in there of even the experiences of people ringing the bell. And sometimes you're excited thinking that they right. rung it because they, they beat it, but then really it was actually that that was their last treatment. What is something that you wish more people knew when it comes to supporting a family member or friend who has cancer? Cancer is one of those things where no matter how many times I tell you about it, if you don't go through it personally, it won't hit. You, you think of like, I remember when I got diagnosed, it seemed like every other commercial was some type of cancer medication, something post chemo, but something cancer related. And I remember thinking, was this always like this? And I just didn't notice it. And that, that's the thing I think that hits the most for me. That's what resonates with me. Like you touched on the stories in the book. These were all people that I actually interacted with. Some of these people died. Like this was serious. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I think that's that's the thing I would stress the most from the book. That, that's what I would emphasize the most. Yeah. And it's something it's that touches us all. We all it's either have had it or knew somebody or something. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I think some aspects of it, you just don't, like you said, you don't consider or you don't think about until it's your family member that has cancer. Oh, until now it's you. <laughs> yeah, or until it's you. Like now you're looking into how can I prevent this or how can I whatever, especially, um, you know, sometimes people don't go to their annual checkups at all. Right. I know, especially like when you look at the statistics, it seems like men are more stagnant to go and get those annual checkups. And, and things. we are, we are. And I, in my last interview, I stressed that if you don't do anything else, please go get checked. Even if you feel perfectly fine, once you reach a certain age, go get checked. Yeah. yeah. Just trust me. If you don't, and it, I've, I've seen it way too many times. The family members, I've lost relatives to cancer. Yeah. Early detection is everything. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, and like you said, I know you've seen a lot of stories. I was a CNA for six years. And I think sometimes, too, I think the younger we are, the cockier we are about our health. And, oh, I'm not yeah. playing on whatever. Absolutely. We feel like we're going to live forever. Yeah, that's not gonna happen to me. That's something that would happen to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I think it's so easy for us to think that, especially like if you're under forty, you're like, "Oh, I don't need to get that kind of exam done. I don't need to get that kind of checkup done." And Absolutely. cancer can hit at any age. And the thing is, with that, you can always find a reason to not do something. You're always gonna be too tired. You always can't get the day off. You always gotta do something. Mm -hmm. Trust me, go get it done. Absolutely. I agree. And especially, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I agree with you on that. And I think another issue, too, in our community specifically, all diseases ravage our community, especially cancer. The numbers are still staggering to this day. And I think it's because of the phobia we have of just dealing with medicine, period. You know what I'm saying? A lot of this has been miseducation, things we assumed. Yeah. Absolutely. How do you think since your experience, how do you think your relationship with food or even health, your health in general has changed? 
Now, this is weird. Now, when it comes to food, I never had a problem eating. Like, the whole joke with the whole title of the book was, <laughs> or what am I going to call it? What you've been saying all along was getting you through, prayers and whole bars. So I never had a problem eating. Like, I was the only person that would actually, would actually eat during chemo. Mm -hmm. Like, while I'm actually hooked up to all this stuff, I'm eating pole bars. So I think it was a major blessing being from here. We the food capital of the world, there's no question. And I think that helped tremendously. Yeah. I thought that was so beautiful when I read it. I'm like, he really was pulling up with his lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Every every time. That is beautiful. Um, that's definitely beautiful. That's why after I finished reading the book, I had to reach out to you. And I was like, I wonder if he would be open to doing an interview about his book because I really was moved by it. I absolutely am. And I was deeply humbled by that. That's rare. I'm Thank not going to get eerie-eyed. <laughs> Just because I do read such a, a vast variety of books, but your book just kind of had a way that just, I think it hit home just because I, I do have a family member that's dealing with cancer for a second time and just seeing how much it changes you, how much it just, it definitely makes you realize life is, is only so long. It's Absolutely. only so long and it's so fragile and you have to take your health seriously. Absolutely. And that's something I think that really flies under the radar. and People don't realize even when you beat cancer from that day forward, you kind of expect to get that news again at some point. Like mm -hmm. you never feel completely back to you. There is no normal. Yeah. And I think that that needs to be stated much more. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like every time I go back for a checkup, there is no way that's not in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. You get a cold, the slightest little thing goes wrong. Here we go again. Yep. Yeah, I don't think that's talked enough or discussed enough. And that's why I have started recommending your book so much because I'm like, Thank this you. book really, <laughs> oh, I think it's something we don't think about. There it goes. Yes, it's something we don't think about enough. Like just how simple things like eating, all right. of a sudden you might have not have the energy to or certain foods you used to enjoy. Now it just does not taste the same. Um, right. And it's, it's funny something. you bring that up because the nutritionist initially told me, my advice is try to stay away from the foods you like. And I was like, wait, what? Because you'll be so nauseous, you'll start to equate the food you like with throwing up. Mm -hmm. Like, it makes sense, but uh, we sticking with these pole bars. <laughs> well, next time I go to New Orleans, I'll make sure that I do check them out. Matter of fact, next time you in town, hit me up. I'm treating. Listen, I will. It's only about, a, I think it was a six and a half hour drive from Memphis. So it wasn't too bad. Right. Yep. So I appreciate you coming on here so much and just sharing. I appreciate it. I truly thank you. And I'm, I'm I'm at a loss for words. Like I've been trying to wrap my head around this for about a week. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Again, yeah, just, thank you. Absolutely. And I thank you too, because I know it was super random when I reached out at first about the book. I think I left a comment underneath your post. Like, would you mind if I reviewed your book? And then I came right back. Like, right. It was like, so do you mind if we do it? Right. And it's so funny because I had been following your page for weeks. I read every review you did, like for the past few months. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. I'm, I'm subscribed to your YouTube channel. Trust me. I was a <laughs> fan long before we ever talked. That is so exciting. And I think that's a big thing of being an author, just being a content creator. You never know who's watching. And that's why you have to be so consistent. Absolutely. You'll trust me, whoever you are, whatever you're writing about, your story is inspiring somebody. You're somebody's favorite author. That's true. That is so true. That's true. So you have to tell us your handles. How can we find you on, on Facebook and you said Instagram? What are your handles on there? Author, 
Arthur L. Singleton on every, every platform I'm on. Just look up Arthur L. Singleton and I'm right there. All right, perfect. Well, I'm going to make sure that I shoot you the link to this video as soon as I get it. Please do. Yes, and I want to thank you again for coming on here. You are very welcome and thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'll be in touch with you soon. Please do have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.